Hey everyone, welcome back to Magically Unstable. I'm Kurt. I'm Nick. And I'm Nicole. And we are here to talk about Disney. And our anxiety. And that's why we're Magically, Magically Unstable. Unstable. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Let's do that one more time. <laughs> or we can just keep that whole thing. Oh my God, that made me lightheaded. Oh my God. I'm Kurt. I'm Nick. And I'm Nicole. And we are here to talk about Disney. And our anxiety. And that's why we're Magically Magically Unstable. Unstable. All right, guys, welcome back to Magically Unstable. Yay! Yay. Nice. This week, we are going to be heading to Disney California Adventure and really focusing on the Lunar New Year Festival that takes place there normally when it's open uh, and Lunar New Year in general. But first, I want to just kind of catch up with you guys. What's been going on this week? Nick, what is what is something that happened to you this week? Oh, gosh. Um, honestly, most of this week's events have happened today. Well, I was in Magic Kingdom today filming and I decided to hop over to the Polynesian And, like, it's been kind of cold in Florida lately, like, high 40s, low 50s. So that's, like, super cold. I know. So I've been super used to only, like, wearing sweaters out, wearing scarves out, like, bundling up. And today was hot. It was in the mid-70s. And so I went out, like, in a normal T-shirt and leggings, but my body, like, wasn't used to the heat. So walking around in Magic Kingdom all day and then... You now have to walk to the Polynesian because the monorail service is um, they like knock down the platform and that walk from like the Magic Kingdom to the Polynesian. I like almost passed out today. It was crazy. I was leaning against a pole outside Captain Cook's and I was like, is this where I faint and crack my head open and die like at the Polynesian resort? Like, But no, I was fine. Um, Captain Cook's, by the way, gives you a giant thing of fries if you order a side it's like a box of them so definitely recommend captain cook's at the polynesian resort my main question is did you have did you have water yes i had this huge obviously you guys who are listening can't see it but it's a huge water bottle i drank at least one or two i probably one of them knowing myself um but i was only gone for like four hours and this is like i don't know at least four 48 ounces. Did you eat anything? Not until I got them fries. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. I did. Wait, I had an iced coffee, though. So I had I had like sugar and caffeine. It must have been like the crash. And oh, yeah, I almost met my demise um, next to a tiki pole. So, you know, but we're good. I'm, I'm back. I'm kosher. So, yeah, <laughs> it sounds like a good Friday. Oh, yeah. Party. But no. Anyway, uh, Nicole, you have an interesting story just from today as well. Yeah, today sucked. Um, <laughs> so I wake up. I'm pretty sure that's that's how you started out your last, like the first thing you said when you were introducing yourself. I'm pretty sure you said oh, something like that. I bitched about the snow, but now yeah. I'm yep. going to bitch about the cold. Um, so it killed my car battery this morning, and I found that out at 645 when I was headed to go babysit. Um, So that kind of dampened my day a little bit. And then my brother did come to the rescue as he did last week, which like, okay, thanks. Aladdin carpet shit brother. Aladdin carpet shit brother. Yes. (laughs) It's the The only only one. one. Yeah. It's the the only only one one ever. Yeah. (laughs) The the ACSB. (laughs) Yes. The ACSB. Yes. He came to the rescue, but uh, my car never started. So that it's just been a fun project and it finally it finally um works now so i guess it's a little bit better and i got pizza for dinner we all got pizza for dinner actually we did um yeah, yeah thanks thank for you. that nick 20 dollars yeah. i didn't need to spend but here we are <laughs> um it was worth it but yeah no i'm 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 much better this friday night than i was this friday morning because it was in the negatives <laughs> okay kurt how was your day I mean, my day was fine. I would say overall this week was probably my most eventful day was yesterday. Um, I had to get a root canal finished, but there was some miscommunication and that ended up not happening. So that was a little confusing. Um, but that was probably the biggest thing that happened to me with this week would be to not get my root canal finished because I want it to be finished because my tooth hurts. Yeah. Um, 
other than that, it's been pretty, pretty chill. Ugh, root canals, man. Eeh. No, thanks. Yeah. I'm a little desensitized. That's now fair. That yeah. I'm engaged to a dentist. It's is, just kind of mm. normal life, I guess. Yeah, that's kind of make or break for me. If you are in the dentistry field, that's a no. <laughs> that is a no Isn't on all it like, accounts. Is it a kink? Like, is there any like kink toward being like a dentist with the mouth thing? Or is it just dentists really like being in mouths to make sure they're healthy? You know, I can speak for all of them. I would say it's probably a good mix. Perfect. That's what I that's what I pictured. So like totally validated. Great. <laughs> no judgment man uh, I love that I don't actually know if I love that honestly being the one who's getting the dental work done it's fine okay <laughs> alright <laughs> let's move on to some Disney news Nick what do you have for housekeeping yay alright the best section where you learn all the latest Disney news <laughs> Is that, that is, so, is that your sting? <laughs> I don't know. What the, yes. We should probably cut that. But anyway. Um, Absolutely not. <laughs> air horn. Air horn it in. <laughs> anyway, Nicole, let's start with you. Uh, what What is the latest Disney news for the company as a whole? Um, Anything interesting? I saw that Raya and the Last Dragon is to hit theaters on June 4th. However, Disney Plus uh, is premier- doing the premiere access for March 5th. It's the Wait, same- really? Yeah, they just <gasps> announced it. You're welcome for that Disney news. Wow, wow, wow. I did I not know. I know. Bow, 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 bow. Wow. Yeah, it's the same Mulan, like how it's the $30. So they're releasing it early to Disney Plus and you can do some pre-order for it starting March 5th, but it come, it drops in theaters on June 4th. I am shook yeah. because I was literally just at the Disney store and I saw, um, though they have like a whole like display thing for Raya mm-hmm. with like the action figures and like shirts and stuff. And it said in theaters and on Disney plus March 5th. So they probably like just changed yeah, it. I just saw a yeah. commercial, like literally right before we started this podcast on Hulu. Yep. Mm -hmm. That is exciting. Right? Okay. Kurt, what about you? Anything with Disneyland? Yeah. um, I I, I couldn't pick between two things um, because that's the indecisiveness that runs my life. (laughs) Fair. So my, my my first thing is just going to be really quick. Uh, So downtown Disney, I believe I mentioned last week, uh, they're reopening their uh, dining locations. So uh, as of today, as of yesterday, actually, from recording this, um, Mickey pretzels, popcorn, fluffernutter churros, uh, corn dogs, turkey legs. They're all being sold on Buena Vista Street. Um, So it kind of is like the park is open, like the slightest, slightest amount, Um, which leads me into my next point that I didn't want to leave out that you told me last week uh, is that the uh, California legislation members have sent in uh, uh, articles for a bill, I guess, to put theme parks, major theme parks, so Disneyland, uh, Universal Studios, Knott's Berry Farm, into the third tier, not the fourth tier of California's reopening plan. So basically, uh, their argument, which I completely agree with, is, I, I mean, yes, I agree with because I want to go to Disney, I want it to open, but I also want everybody to be safe. Like, I don't want to go to Disney bad enough to kill someone. Yeah, that's, so, yeah, <laughs> same. Yeah, or or die. So, but I do agree with the sense of they want it to be in the same tier as smaller theme parks. So smaller theme parks can open in the third tier and Disneyland major theme parks can open in the fourth tier, which I really don't understand why that was ever decided that way. Like, like, like I feel like they're basically saying like, oh, you can go and do these amusement park activities in small groups, but you can't do them in bigger groups. Like transmission is transmission. Right. It it doesn't matter about, you know, if you're going to go to a small group or a large group, you're still exposing yourself. Yes, you're the risk is larger. <laughs> yeah. Like, yes, the risk is larger if you have more people. But Disneyland and other theme parks also have a larger land mass to cover than a smaller theme park. So I feel like it just kind of equals out. Right. Anyways, it doesn't really make sense to me. And you know what? I also want cast members to get back to work. Yes. Like, it, like it's just mm-hmm. not, and, and not even cast members, just Anaheim and, and, you know, Universal and all of these places that rely on theme parks 
for small businesses and for us, like, you know, Disney YouTubers. And like, this is our job also. Like, I want to go back to the park. I want to get content. I want to have things to talk about so that I can also get paid. Um, anyways, I guess I had a little therapy moment just there. I didn't know how much I like felt about it until I started talking about it. Hey, that's totally fair. That's my other news. <laughs> you know, especially though, Kurt, like, so just a couple weeks ago, California's COVID numbers were crazy. Like in the 50,000 a day, like reported new cases. But now California's COVID cases are almost lower than Florida's. And we are completely open. And the theme parks have been open forever. And clearly California is showing that people are willing to learn and listen and follow rules. So I don't know. We'll see what I'm happens. <laughs> Yeah, we will see what happens. Okay. I mean, it's also on a personal note, sorry, on a personal mm, note, it's mm -hmm. also dampering like wedding planning for us. Like, right. And that's a huge thing. We can't move forward really with anything until the parks open because like I don't want to sign a contract and pay, you know, however much a contract fee is to have my wedding at Disneyland without seeing venues and without tasting food. And like right. I can't do any of that until the park opens. Right. Right. Yeah, that's totally fair. Totally fair. OK, so this last part, which is Walt Disney World housekeeping. Sorry, I'm pausing because I want to get this stuff right because it's actually really cool. I'm just trying to sit so still so my microphone doesn't move. <laughs> I know I love that you're like you were like holding it perfectly the entire time. You have a fucking uh, pudgy, pudgy mic. <laughs> OK. I can't wait for that to be in the audio. It's just me <laughs> eating my microphone and it's... Ow, ow, ow. <laughs> okay, so really exciting for Walt Disney World. Obviously, it's February, which means it's Black History Month. Now, you will hear me, you'll hear all of us complain and bitch about how Disney really whitewashes a lot of cultures, especially where it matters the most. But it's really exciting because if you also didn't know, a movie called Soul came out. And was that... That was... I think late December. I don't think it was January. Yeah, I think it was Christmas. Yeah, it was December. But still, it's really exciting because it is a movie about um, the main, all of the main characters are black. And it's about um, this guy who's like always aspired to be a jazz music. Mus oh, my God. Hey, hey. <laughs> and <laughs> there's a lot of jazz um, components in this film. And that's really exciting. So... I felt like Disney World had a nice platform for this month to maybe do something special, do something more than what they've done in the past for Black History Month. And they are. So they are doing this thing or this, I guess you could call it event called Celebrate Soulfully. And it's mm -hmm. all kind. Yeah, it's all kind of based around the movie Soul. So they're really using that as a theme. So some things that they're hoping to do throughout the month is have some black heritage events, whether it be around um, the culture of music, food, art, and apparently there are other things that they have planned. So the first thing, actually starting on the 1st of February, they have a whole brand new exhibit on jazz, which is super cool. And it kind of brings you on like a musical tour of how jazz was inspired and just really gives you a nice background on um, black culture in jazz, which is pretty much hand in hand in the United States, at least like, yeah, black culture and jazz. Yeah, they're they're on the same path. Um, so I think that's super cool. Cool. So Joe Gardner is in Seoul. He is the main character. And it's this short of, um, yeah, Joe Gardner. Yes, that's who it is. Sorry, I'm second guessing myself. You don't want another, uh, what's, his, what's his name? The fucking uh, Fox News anchor. <laughs> Where you fucked up that one guy's name. <laughs> yes, I know. I'm so bad with that. Uh, apparently, also, they're having at Disney Springs, you know, the concerts on... Um, the stage down there, uh, right across from Walt. What is wrong with me? My mouth is just like so fucking dry. It's probably because the fucking me passing out at the Polynesian. <laughs> it's the pizza <laughs> or the pizza. Anyway, and they are also in downtown Disney. 
there is a stage there where they have some live entertainment. It's going to feature jazz three out of the seven days of the week, which is super cool. They're going to be. Never mind. I'm not adding it. I'm not adding it because they're complicated names and I'm going to fuck it up. And then finally, (laughs) it's like Motown Mondays, Jazz Thursdays and Smooth Sundays. I know I'd fuck that up. You did it right there. Yeah. Well, whatever. (laughs) Okay. Motown Mondays would be really cool, though. I I was big into Motown when I was a senior in high school because we got to visit Motown. Yeah. Yeah. So in those short concerts, they're going to have music from Soul and the Princess and the Frog. So super cute. And then finally, if you guys didn't know, some of the Disney resorts actually host an event called Movies Under the Stars. And Disney is now going to offer um, movies that celebrate black acting and black talent uh, most of the nights in February. And that's just that is awesome because typically resorts end up playing like just Disney movies or Actually, I think it's always Disney movies. And now they're they're actually going to celebrate blackness, which is great. So that is Walt Disney World news and housekeeping. That's exciting. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really excited. I love that. That's why I read off of a script. So I didn't fuck any of it up because it was super important. <laughs> <laughs> I really hope that my microphone picked that up. There's some little fucking kids running around outside of my apartment complex right now. And one of them just went, one of them just went, "Ah!" (laughs) I could hear it from my closed (laughs) window. (laughs) Do it back at them out of your window. That's when a child's like getting abducted and like, and we talked about it. It's at the, nope, not going to say the name of my complex. I don't don't need any paparazzi. Don't do that. Shut the fuck up. You get dis- <laughs> you get dis- I'm gonna move into the next section. <laughs> yeah, let's let's get past that. <laughs> okay, well, when there was a kidnapping at my apartment complex, we can note right back to this moment. Great. Honestly, it's more likely that it's a kidnapping in Kenosha than yeah. than paparazzi. Yeah. Sorry, Nicole. <laughs> Oh, I wasn't worried about paparazzi right now, but I didn't want to say the name of it (laughs) and have paparazzi show up after the millions that listen to this podcast. (laughs) Don't fuck. Anyway, Kurt. Yeah, I guess we can move on. Yeah, Kurt, what do you have for us? (laughs) So I think we should talk about our uh, our weekly YouTube video that just came out. All right, let's do it. So for those of you. This is exciting. This is like a this is a cultural episode this is a beyond very white people podcast. culture yay this is exciting yeah this is one of my this is one of my favorites so uh for those of you who follow us on youtube or are subscribed to our youtube channel we just released a lunar new year video and it touches base on uh the new lunar new year merch that we have here in uh disney california adventure and dot on disney i guess uh but it also highlights a lot of things that happened last year and some of the food and i i talk about uh just just lunar new year in general so i guess we can just kind of dive in and talk about lunar new year a little bit more and uh, i i would like to talk a little bit more about the experience of going to the festival last year because it is probably my favorite disney festival out of any disney festival i have ever been to wow nice <laughs> Let's all take a moment of silence. Wow. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) Wow. But I think before I get too into it, maybe we should take a little break. Yes, because I could definitely take a pee pee right now. (laughs) (laughs) Take a tinkle. (laughs) Maybe I'll maybe I'll get me a sodi. Yeah, I get a diet sodi, so it cancels it out. That's right. A diet sodi pop. All right, I'm going to talk about Lunar New Year when we come back. All right, everyone, now that we're stopped, let's take a minute to shout out to our socials. Since you've made it this far, maybe subscribe to our podcast. You can subscribe wherever you're listening, like Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, or whatever you're listening on right now. You can also follow us over on Instagram and TikTok at Foreverland Fairy Tales. 
And most importantly, if you want more Disney content or if you want to listen to our podcast on YouTube, make sure you find us there. We're at Foreverland Fairy Tales and just remember to subscribe. All right, let's get back to the episode. Are we all ready? Yeah, we ready. All right. As we'll ever be. Jesus Christ. <laughs> that was very Forrest Gump. <laughs> Can't sit here. Lieutenant Dan. Why did you let me do that, Lieutenant Dan? <laughs> Lieutenant Dan, what happened to your legs? <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Woo! Jenny. <laughs> Jenny. <laughs> All right, welcome back. Uh, let's get started into our weekly YouTube video, the Lunar New Year Festival at Disneyland. So, uh, before I get too far into the video, Nick, do you have anything that's happening at Walt Disney World for the Lunar New Year Festival? So do I have some news for you? <laughs> There's absolutely fucking nothing that's happening at Walt Disney World for for Lunar New Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. I have something I have something yeah. for this. I totally I know. have I something. I totally didn't want to take any of Kurt's thunder for this story cuz I know he has one. But you know what we do have? We have a spirit jersey and a new pair of min, uh, mini ears that are Chinese Lunar New Year themed. But even though we have a gorgeous pavilion with a beautiful showroom and plenty of Chinese art and theater, there's nothing happening. <laughs> so, um, Kurt, I will leave you with my sarcastic tone to tell your story. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Thank you for sharing the same <laughs> sarcastic tone uh, that I feel about my story. So, OK. Let's bring it back to, um, I want to say Lunar New Year of, I just saw it on my actual, my time hop. It was today, two years ago, that we, that Peter and I went to Epcot for Lunar New Year. And we planned our whole week knowing that we were going to go to Epcot on Lunar New Year because they have the China Pavilion. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and there's things because it's like a, a cultural park. And you would think that there would be, I don't know, the smallest thing to celebrate or even acknowledge the Lunar New Year. And there's nothing. There's literally nothing. I mean, they uh, to be fair, they do have the smallest thing to acknowledge it. They have a spirit jersey. Right. Yes. OK, <laughs> sure. When <laughs> we went effort. two years ago, they didn't even have a spirit jersey. Oh my there God. was nothing. So, um, I mean, I do have a, I do agree that that's horrible, but I do have a question for you. Did you do any research? No. Like to I just, see if the festival was like to see if they were like doing anything for no, it. No, I just assumed that wasn't supposed to sound as shitty as that sounded. I just that was really that, shitty like, how it came out. I mean, well, you're you. I <laughs> <laughs> you are right. I am very me. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, I just you assumed that there was going to be something or... because it's Epcot. Like it's like the right the hub I mean, of festivals. I would have assumed the exact same thing, but I just didn't know if he would like looked into it and saw that like Disneyland did something and you were like, oh yeah, hell yeah, let's go, bitch. Well, no, I mean, I know that Disneyland has like an entire festival for it. Um, but I, so I just assumed that Disney World would at least have like, I don't know, food, something, like anything, literally anything. So I want to run by our day really quick. We get to Epcot, super excited, head into the China Pavilion and there, it's, it's, one, it's a ghost town. Like the only thing that was exciting was that we were at one of the, it was during Festival of the Arts and it was at one of the, the China booths where you can get like a moon cake and some boba and other things. And Peter said, happy new year to the workers who are at the time were from China. And they were like, oh, happy new year, blah, blah, blah. They were so excited. And they gave us, we still have it on our fridge. They gave us, um, a pink red envelope and oh, it was a really cute aw. thing. And, and then they started handing them out. It was very exciting. That was, that was the highlight. So then we go to meet Mulan and we're like, Oh, it's going to be so fun. Like it's, it's lunar new year. We're going to meet Mulan in the China pavilion. It's going to be this great thing. We get there 
she didn't even have a photo pass person. Oh, we had to have like the random man behind us take a picture of us with Mulan in the China in the China Pavilion yes. on Lunar New Year. It was on the day of the start of the celebration. Ooh. There was nothing, not even a photo pass person. And and the uh, cast member who's playing Mulan was like great and like said like said Happy New Year back to Peter and like it was like the, a very like nice experience. But like. They didn't even have like the lion dance show. They didn't have, they had like a little tiny acrobat show while we were in line to meet Mulan, but it wasn't even for the Lunar New Year Festival. It was just a thing that they do in the China Pavilion. Just ball dropped by Walt Disney World. It was very upsetting. And what's also like, it's almost unacceptable because think about, Epcot during any traditional European thing like Oktoberfest. Yeah. Or European holiday. Right. Like Christmas is celebrated to the extent. Oktoberfest, Thanksgiving, like they, they will do little pop up events. Halloween. And you're telling me with what isn't like they're a huge part of American population are Chinese people. Like that it is just insane to me that Disney will cater to European holidays and Epcot literally being the park known for its culture. It, you know, it would even satisfy me if in their theater for one day they played like a history of the Lunar New Year, like informational video right. Right. or something or at to least like, like for right. the seven days of the festival. Like, right. Just uh, Anything. Right. Literally anything. Nothing. I completely understand this year not meeting Mulan, not having any performers, but literally the bare minimum. It's just it's kind of gross. And I know in future episodes, I definitely want to get into the whitewashing of Disney festivals. But this is just like this is just the tip of the iceberg for how irritating it is between the three of us how we just cannot stand the whitewashing in Disney. So um, it was bad. It was, we were very disappointed to say the least. You Walt Disney world, like boo, boo. Anyway, that's all. That's it. We have a spirit Jersey and mini ears. So (laughs) whippity fucking. And I'm sure it's the same spirit Jersey and mini ears that they sell at Disneyland. I, I, I looked and it literally looks the exact same. Wouldn't surprise me. I mean, that's what it was last year. Oh, also, Nicole. Yeah. When you ask Kurt if he researched. So it's funny enough. If you search Lunar New Year Disney World, the first thing that pops up is Disneyland. Like they're my experience website because they actually have embedded in their website that they have this festival. Huh. Walt Disney World, it's nowhere on their Fair. website. So it's not even like they're planning on maybe so introducing strange. something. Mm-hmm. With I mean, like, Epcot, it's Epcot, too. Epcot. Like, what the fuck? Right. What the fuck? I understand not celebrating it at the other parks, but like, like, I guess understand to an extent. Yes. Because look at, look at the traditional New Year's, like, the New Year ball drop. They do fucking celebrations at all of the parks, right? All of them? Or is it just Magic Kingdom where they have New Year's Eve? I'm not sure. I honestly don't know. And they would normally do like like the castle mm-hmm. ball drop or whatever, the countdown at the castle. Yeah, I don't know. Like, you're telling me you can celebrate one New Year and not whatever. Whatever. Yeah, it's very frustrating, especially with how much Disney does parades. And I, I don't know if this is serious. Kurt, you can correct me if I'm wrong, you know, being literally engaged to a Chinese person. But a huge tradition that you see is like the parades with the Chinese dragons. Like you're telling me Disney can't make a Chinese dragon to parade, you know, even do a Chinese or a a Lunar New Year parade. That is literally bare minimum. Right. Bare fucking minimum. Yep. Yep. Anyway, (laughs) let's move on. (laughs) Anyway, Nicole, what did you find on Lunar New Year? Let Nick and I calm down mm-hmm. a second. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Let's let this uh, simmer. Um, so I was researching some facts about Lunar New Year and I thought it was interesting. So um, they sorry, I'm going to word it wrong. The most fireworks are set off in the world the night of Lunar New Year. And it was kind of confusing for me. Um 
Kurt, I know you can you can clarify this, but I know Lunar New Year runs for seven days. Is there a Lunar like New Year Eve and then a Lunar New Year? Like, do they have that set date? It, because I, otherwise I'm going to interpret that as like all seven days. Like they just it's a celebration of. Um, I believe it's just a celebration. I could be okay. I could be wrong. Um, I know that Peter and his family are not the most traditional in the sense of how they celebrate Lunar New Year, like in China proper. Right. Um, but I believe that it is throughout the entire seven days. Okay. Um, when I was living in New York, I do remember going down the day of Lunar New Year. So like Lunar New Year day, like the day it started. Um, and there was like confetti and like, um, gotcha. just like a lot of like party things on like on the street, like rubble from the night before. So which is also illegal in China, but they do it anyway because they're like, <laughs> it's Lunar New Year. That was like the fact right below it. They're like, but it's all illegal. <laughs> um, yeah, no, they set off fireworks at night, um, like up until midnight uh, to ward off. I don't like that they use the word monsters. <laughs> they use like the specific, like specifically the word monster. And then they, they like listed a name of... One of them, I don't know that I can pronounce it, though. It was in a couple different, like, places that I looked. Um, oh, it's about a myth. It's Nyan, Nyan, N-I-A-N. Mm. I don't know. It's supposed to ward off this. I don't like calling it a monster because I was watching Monsters, Inc. earlier, and I, don't, I can't separate the two. And um, it's supposed to ward off that and bad luck. And then the, in the morning, it's supposed to welcome good luck in the new year. So it's just celebration all the time. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. I mean, you definitely hit it on the head. I feel just like a, in general, I, I had talked to Peter a little bit about it last night uh, leading up to this recording. And I just wanted to know, I guess, more from like his firsthand experience. But. Uh, he said like the, the way that you could think of Lunar New Year, especially, so it, it's Lunar New Year because it's celebrated throughout a lot of different Asian um, traditions and different Asian countries. And um, he says specifically for, for Chinese people, it's huge. It's this huge celebration, which is why a lot of times you'll also hear it called Chinese New Year. Um, but it's, it's a massive amalgamation of like if you think of like the western holidays he said it's like an, a massive a massive amalgamation of like fourth of july new year's eve new year's day christmas and thanksgiving like it's all That's of kind that of what i had envisioned in my head with it yeah he's like it's all of that like mixed into one giant holiday and uh he's like you know that's why in china like it's a whole week long Everybody gets off of work that entire week. School is closed that entire week. Like people travel from all over the world <clears throat> to come back home and spend time with their families. Can I throw in another fact that I found? You just you just triggered my memory with that is that it is the most traveled for holiday in the world. Yeah. Like the most like I don't want to say migrant because that makes it sound like people move there. But <laughs> Like people travel there more than any time in the year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because people come from all over the world to, yeah. you know, go back with their family. And, you know, it, it's all about spending time with your family and uh, just being together, kind of like how Christmas is. But it's he said it's like Fourth of July for America in the sense of like it's very deep rooted in their tradition and, you know, celebrating their tradition as as a Chinese culture. like warding off these demons and monsters and the red envelopes and the food that you eat, you know, represents um, traditions and uh, legends that have been passed down, you know, for, for centuries. And so, so, I mean, it's even like on, on the table, you want to have like fish because fish, fish represents prosperity and you want to have like long noodles because the long noodles represent a long life and you want to have dumplings because the dumplings look like a coin purse and it represents good fortune. Like it's all tied into all of these traditions and legends and, and, and tales that have been, like I said, you know, passed down through generation to generation. And it's just this one week of events that is such like a huge celebration in, in, in China. 
Uh, and, and I mean, like I said, in all uh, Asian countries. Um, so yeah, so that's a little bit of history on Lunar New Year in general. Um, we kind of do a little bit, like I said, here here at our home. You know, we we make fish, we have noodles, we make dumplings, and we send out red envelopes to all of our closest friends and our family members um, and anybody kind of who we're a little bit close with uh, outside of, I guess, our, our inner circle. Um, just for, you know, prosperity and good luck and and everything like that going in for the for the new year if you want to send me like 17 of those <laughs> does the number matter like if you get more just to be extra <laughs> sure the number that you get doesn't matter but the number of money inside is like usually what matters so you want to have like the the good amount is like um uh I can't think of the word because I'm terrible at math. Um, denomination. A denomination. I, no. I don't know. You want to have it to do it's with eight. Divisible by eight, maybe? Maybe. I don't I don't know. This is not a, a math podcast. Eight. Multiple sounds. So you want to like have like. A multiple of eight. That sounds sure. right. You want to have like 38. Oh, like eight it ending it. Oh, oh that is not. A, so like a common number yeah. of eight. It's a common number. Yes. Yes. Or, and if it's not eight, an even number is better than an odd number, except for the number four, because in Chinese, I don't know how to say it, but I know that the number four sounds very similar <laughs> to um, bad luck. Oh, I get it. I get it. Sorry. I, th- I thought you were saying that <laughs> four, four sounds like an a odd war? number. Oh, <laughs> no. Because no, he was like, <laughs> even numbers, except you always want even numbers, not odd. He's, and then he was like, except for four. And I thought he was going to say, except for four, because four is like, good luck. And I was like, no. oh, bro, that's an even no, number. No, I get no. it. Yeah, I get it. I get it. Um, so, yeah. So you usually will receive money in your red envelopes for good fortune. So you kind of want to do that um, and not have any odd numbers or anything with a number four in it because you don't want to bring bad luck. Um, But yeah, so that's usually what we do. That's how we celebrate. Uh, But last year we got to celebrate at the Disney California Adventure Lunar New Year Festival. And like I said, in the beginning of this section, that was probably not even probably that is my favorite Disney festival I have ever been to in my life and probably nothing will ever beat it. It, had the most delicious food it had the greatest um live show so they do a whole parade it, it's like a milan processional um in disney california adventure and it happens right on the uh paradise lake like right in front of like the mickey fun wheel the giant mickey uh ferris wheel thing and they have lion dancers they have acrobats they have um um, I don't know what they're called. Ribbon dancers. That's what they're called. Uh, and, and they just have like uh, uh, martial arts, I want to say. I believe it's a martial art demonstration. It's so cool. It's all these different things. And then Mulan comes out and she's with Mushu and um, Mickey and Minnie are there and Chip and Dale and I believe Donald and Goofy are there and they're all in their Lunar New Year outfits. And they're and, so cute. And they're so cute. When it's you such a great. They're so cute. It's such a great. Sh- yeah. Um, Kurt shared with us photos, and it was literally like the cutest shit ever. <laughs> yeah, I'll make sure to throw some up on our Instagram, uh, so that way you know if you're listening to this and you want to know what it's like, you can check it out, or you can check out our YouTube video. Either or. Both but and. It, it's such a great festival, and I was really upset that Walt Disney World didn't have anything, and I cannot wait until we're able to celebrate it again next year yay that's super that's super cool little sad that disneyland is closed but so you can't do you know you can't celebrate it this year but celebrate it like the rest of our holidays yeah (laughs) yeah (laughs) everything inside all right so let's head into our therapy session therapy session with kurt and nick and nicole i was like you are bitch you went first So don't even act like you're it not is your included. Therapy session. Kurt, hold on, I'm reprimanding the child. I know, I know. <laughs> reprimanding the two year old that's on our podcast. <laughs> I'll take it. I'm literally sitting on the floor in a corner. So 
my knees couldn't handle yeah, it. Literally. I mean, uh, my knees are stretched out. My knees are fine. My ass. No. <laughs> my back. No. no. <laughs> On fire. <sighs> All numb. All right. So Nick, you have this week's therapy session. What are you going to what are you going to talk about? I was struggling so bad between three different things. But Nicole was the only one that gave me feedback. <laughs> so I think I'm going to go with the one that she had suggested. I was bitching about stuff all day today. And it all <laughs> had to do about like something I could definitely bring up for therapy. But I think I'm going to bring up um, the anxiety I get in Disney bathrooms. Nice. Yes. Now yes. you say, now you say <laughs> Nick, why would you get anxiety in a Disney bathroom? And let me fucking tell you why. Is this pre pre or post COVID? Um, it's both. It is both. So this this ascends the the COVID bracket. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so if you know us, um, a, a tip or something that we've talked about always is how. We use the Disney bathrooms as like anxiety safe havens, right? Like the bathrooms are always air conditioned. They're usually playing like nice music. You go find a corner stall and you just sit in there and you breathe for a second. Well, (laughs) the bathrooms can also be a source of fucking anxiety hell because let me tell you. Fucking cesspool. They're so disgusting sometimes. So. I will share with you some of my uh, worst stories that I have for Disney bathrooms. Please do. Content warning. Yeah, there's definitely one gross that I think I'm going to save <laughs> for last that I'm absolutely going to have a trigger warning on because it's that gross. Oh my god, I can't wait. Yes. So, um if you don't if you guys don't know, I identify obviously uh, not obviously, but as a, you know, I go by she her, I choose to use the women's bathroom. So my experiences will be from the women's bathroom point of view, which I don't know what women do when they use the bathroom as to why it gets this disgusting. Like, I honestly. I'm astounded. So as someone who goes to Disney a lot, I've seen a lot (laughs) of pretty fucking horrible scenes and I'll start pretty light. So, you know, a pretty common occurrence at Disney is for shit to be smeared on the stall wall. (laughs) Um, That one's more common than you think. It's I almost just vomited again. I I'm so sorry. I ate so much pizza. And I like ate like five breadsticks and I'm so full and I drank like four water bottles. <laughs> Takes another sip. Chugs more water. water. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so it's it's pretty so common to see shit smeared on the wall. I'm assuming most of the time it's children like. I don't know. Isn't that what kids do? They like stick their hands in their butt cracks and like put them on the. <laughs> Kylo agreed. He agreed. He Get said, out. yes, we Get do out. that. And obviously, like shit smeared on the, the toilet seat, like fine, whatever. Not that bad. Very common in Disney. So this is like tier, like tier one. Very common, not so horrible. Um, the second tier, I think for me, would be blood on the wall. That's also very common in the women's bathroom. I don't know how or why you are touching the walls. I mean, we know why someone might have bloody fingers, but why are you rubbing your fingers on the walls? That's my concern. Because to me, I don't know, like blood just seems more. I feel like blood is more of a biohazard than poop. I don't know why, but like. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I agree. It's worse for me knowing that someone is like, <laughs> you know, diddling up in there doing whatever they need to do and then fucking smearing it, like smearing it on the wall because it's not even by the toilet paper dispenser it's like on the opposite side or like up at the top and I'm like what are you doing up there any so yeah that's <laughs> it's on the top of the stall just... like why like it's almost to the point where no they have line. to be standing on the seat to get up that high with the blood it's like It's beyond this point. Um, Yeah, so that's second tier. 
Um, <laughs> I just keep on thinking of the bathroom on the way to Melbourne. <laughs> oh no, the I one where I, that the one. one where I peed in the sink <laughs> because I had to pee that bad, and the toilet was that bad that I couldn't go near the toilet, so I had to pee in the it sink. Was literally, we were okay. Side story. <laughs> We were on our way to Melbourne, Florida to watch a rocket launch and we took this back ass fucking country way and we all had to pee. But because it was COVID, uh, there were a bunch of gas stations that were closed and we found or like they wouldn't let you in to pee. And we found one in the middle of fucking nowhere. And Kurt, you went in first, I think. No, Michael went in first. <laughs> and he walked Michael right went out. in first. You were in front of me. Michael walked in, walked out, and he looked at you and he was like, you're not going to want to go there. And inside of the gas station, like, people are not wearing shoes. Like, it was so weird. So, oh, yeah, you went in there. That toilet must have been clogged for a month. But, like, people continued to use it, like, while it was clogged. So, uh, yeah, that was terrible. But. Oh, my God. Nothing will ever be that bad. That was top tier toilet mess. Like, that was horrible. <laughs> Okay, um, so we were on, I'll go to tier three, you know, shit. This isn't even that bad, but shit like left on the changing table, like a kid just turned it up there and like <laughs> walked away. <laughs> oh, okay, um, let's go to four, which this is tier four. Um, this is almost very rare, but not, not the rarest. Was blood sprayed on the toilet seat today? <laughs> So just explain this to me. I d that doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense like, to me. On the you got to be whipping like, where a you tampon sit down? out. Yes. At like rocket speed <laughs> and water falling blood. Like you have to like really and doing just like, fucking doing like the power squat. Shit. But the thing is it it was it was a fine splatter. Like it was almost like when you watch criminal shows and they show what it looks like when someone gets like blunt force trauma, like it was perfect blood splatters on this toilet seat, but there was no blood on the floor. I mean, like I literally walked in, saw it and I was like, absolutely not. And I turned around. So it was only like maybe three seconds of looking. But like that's something that just gets burned into your brain when you just see blood splattered everywhere. I mean, maybe somebody had some blunt force trauma on the toilet. <laughs> That's kind of what I'm well, thinking. And then, like, you know, you think, where is this person today? But no, you today? think about it. Obvi the obvious choice for blood in a women's bathroom is from, you know, your coochie. But yeah, I'm actually thinking it was a, a butthole blood <laughs> explosion. Like the way that the splatter had, like, I don't know. These are like the a hemorrhoid just like burst. <laughs> Something like that. All I know, That's a thick ass hemorrhoid. It's disgusting, and it's very dangerous to spray your blood places. Like, why? If you've sprayed it's your blood at Disney World to... on Friday in the beginning of February, please email us like, at foreverlandcitizens yes. at gmail .com. We would love to talk to you. We want to know what your health history <laughs> is of how you're. Are able... you okay? Right? Are you even alive? I don't know. There was a closet there and I heard a, it was like a cast members only closet. It probably wasn't a closet. It was probably like a huge supply room. There was a bunch of them in there and they were talking like normal, and like no one was panicked. So I'm sure it's just someone who sprayed their blood out of some part of their body. I don't know. Just a normal day at Walt Disney World. <laughs> yeah. And I, I, how? I cannot, which brings me to number one, which I will put a trigger warning on. I should have put a trigger warning on the last one. But um, vomit, if like vomit triggers you, don't listen to this next part because I'm going to get into it. Oh, yeah. no. Is this a story? Oh, boy. Cue me triggered by vomit. I was like, is this Nicole from last episode on Mission <laughs> no. Space or inside? No, it should be. <laughs> these these are my bathroom horror stories. So, um. Yeah, this one was the worst for me. Um, I'm not very queasy. I, I'm pretty used to cleaning up like pretty disgusting things. Um, was a dog groomer for like 15 years. I've seen some real nasty shit. And uh, <laughs> walk into the women's bathroom in Tomorrowland, the one that's in between um, anti-gravities and star traders. Mm -hmm. It was a hot day. It was hot, right? Oh, no. <laughs> and that bathroom is pretty small. I think it's only got like five stalls. So it's a smaller bathroom. 
And it's a claustrophobic one where you literally have like a foot of tile between the sink and the stall. So I walk in there. I like can remember the colors of the bathroom wall because I'm so scarred. But you walk in there and it's hot. And I look over and it just smells rancid in here, like sour, rancid, horrible. But, you know, when you got to pee at Disney, you you got to pee and the bathrooms are far apart. So I'm like, whatever. And all the way down at the last sink. Think of like chewed up Captain Crunch. Oh, my God. And that is the most vivid thing. Crunch berries or just oh, regular no, crunch, crunch berries? Like, OK, <laughs> probably just red <laughs> crunch berries. <laughs> and just like picture that now picture if you ate an entire box of Captain Crunch with crunch berries and then vomited it up. The entire sink was full of vomit. And we know Disney sinks. They're they're not small. And you think about this. Like a hot day, who knows how long that's been in there. Someone tried to take like paper towel and throw it like on top because but it had been sitting there so long that the paper towel started absorbing the vomit liquid. So just think about this. That vomit's not going down the drain. So some cast member. I was literally about to say. Some cast member that night had to scoop vomit out of a fucking sink that someone puked in. I would have quit my fucking job. I How much do you want to bet they only got paid minimum wage? Literally. Yeah. You know the custodial staff probably gets paid the least out of all of the cast members there and they're the ones in there cleaning up the shit, cleaning up the fucking blood and scooping vomit out of a sink. Get the shop back. Can someone explain to me if you have a toilet within three feet of you, please tell me why you would decide to throw up a fucking cow's milk titty worth, literally a whole cow, a whole (laughs) cow of Captain Crunch. I could not think of something else to think of as a large quantity. That's a really good measurement. Cow's titty. It's a very Wisconsin measurement. That's yes. My brain went (laughs) right to cows. It's just a lot. Like, I don't know what this person ate beforehand because how do you a full sink? Of vomit. That's disgusting. Yeah. Oh, my God. (laughs) And this is now why a place where I used to, like, everyone's used to a clogged (laughs) toilet, seeing someone who took a dump and didn't flush. Like, that's normal at Disney. That's almost every time you go into a stall. But to the point where I'm almost anxious now going into the bathrooms because I don't know what I'm going to find. It's literally a surprise for me every time I go. And it's just getting worse And I don't want to know what's next. So that's going to be uh, my therapy session. Um, I'm pretty much disgusted by humans and what we're capable of doing. Um, At my part time job, someone just shit on the floor the other day. And it wasn't even like it was diarrhea that slipped down like the side of the pants. It was like a full on log across the floor. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe they didn't want to go like the toilet. And I just can't. I cannot handle. I cannot handle. I can't handle it anymore. So if you go to Walt Disney World and you decide to shit on the stall walls, just know I'm going to be the one walking in after you because it's always me that finds it. (laughs) Now now people are going to be on a mission. They're going to be like, I know I would be. Can we nix that? And then fuck up the bathroom. <laughs> and the custodial service is literally going to like Ned Stark honestly, you. I don't think it can get worse. At this point, I, I honestly, unless someone actually like was running in the bathroom. No, I can't because it's going to happen. Stop. Like running in the bathroom and their hot diarrhea shot out at me. <laughs> this is the only Stop. way to top that. Um and then their asshole starts bleeding. <laughs> Where did? <laughs> how, did, how did we get here? How did we get here? We are too far. Oh my God, oh my it, it, God. This is a long journey. We are too oh. far. We need to come back. Whew. So, so on on a oh God. one to ten 
rating, what would you what would you give your anxiety level going into a bathroom at Walt Disney World? You know, after today's event, I actually had to use the bathroom again. And after witnessing the blood splatter today, I had a straight up seven and a half finding a bathroom in the Polynesian Resort. Thank God resort bathrooms are like pristine. Like they must have someone in there like every 15 minutes because resort bathrooms are always clean. But walking into I I legitimately I was like, I can't I don't know if I can do it. So 7.5. That's where I'm at. All right. Pretty fucking horrible. That's yeah, that's not good. Yeah. I don't want to talk about it anymore. <laughs> not good for you and not good for the people that are that are leaving the crime scene. Well, and you know, like Kurt mentioned earlier, like was it pre-COVID or post-COVID? Like you really think about that. Just those are the bodily fluids we can see. Like imagine what people are doing in there with the bodily fluids we cannot see. So that's pretty, pretty fucking nasty. People are nasty. They are. They are. Thanks for that therapy session, guys. I really needed that after today. <laughs> no problem. We and all of our listeners are here for you. <laughs> Glad we could help. <sighs> oh, shit. Okay, let's go to our last section, which is the section where we're, we are not going to talk about um, bodily fluids. We're going to talk about some happy things. Um, let's talk about how to cope with some anxieties that we could get in the parks. So I believe, Kurt, it's you this week. So let's hear um, your tip of coping with something that makes you anxious. Yeah, I would like to give people tips on how we cope with um, fast passes because there are not a lot of things in Disney that give me anxiety like fast passes give me. Yeah, that's that's a good one. Yeah. So, can you, can you, sorry, go ahead. No, what? <laughs> Nicole, what is, <laughs> can you elaborate? Is it like booking a fast pass or is it like getting to a fast pass? Is it like just the general idea of a fast pass? I, like, I, you know what? Let's just go with the general idea of a fast pass because Disneyland and Walt Disney World are different. They are different. Fair. And I feel like the anxiety can transcend both parks. Um, so, I, I mean, I would, I guess the biggest thing that I find about fast passes that just like skyrockets my anxiety, like a lot, a lot of factors do that with fast passes, but like the one that just like, like out, out, out into like deep outer space flies that rocket is, I guess it's more Disneyland now that I think about it because Walt Disney world, you get to like, pick it right you get to like pick it in advance and then you have mm -hmm. to like yeah refresh yes. refresh yep. but the one that really gets me because it will consume my entire day at the disneyland resort is getting a fast pass for phantasmic mm. because you have to mm. get there or world of color you have to get there at park open and like grab it otherwise it's it's gone and um, I, Disneyland has, was doing the paper fast passes for a while, but I was using their max pass feature, which was on the my Disney experience app. And it was basically the same thing as Walt Disney world. It's just on your phone. So, um, yeah, you have to get there right away. Park open. Otherwise they're gone. So I don't like getting up early. I'm not going to go to park open who to does? get a phantasmic yeah, thing. Who does? So what do I do the entire rest of my day at Disneyland? I'm on my phone refreshing. The, the max pass thing, waiting for somebody to cancel their fast pass so that I can get it. And that just ruins my day. But it, there's nothing that I enjoy more than Fantasmic at Disneyland. So I will suffer through that anxiety to get the fast pass. So that's going to be how I cope with that is getting the fast pass so I, that I can have a good seat for Fantasmic. Which, if you guys didn't know... I don't know if they've had some engineer like this whole time for the pandemic trying to figure out how to prevent the algorithm from letting fast passes pop up. But Kurt, we cracked the one with MaxPass and Nicole, us and ex-communicated member, 
cracked the fast pass. So we learned um, that last time you and I were at Disneyland right before they closed and we were doing the mountain challenge. It's like every hour at Disneyland, they release new fast passes, at least when fast passes were happening, which they're not right now, just so you know. Yep. And Disney World, I think it was like check every 20 minutes and it would generate it was like it was either 20 or like 25 minutes. But I think it's on the half an hour. Perfect. So, yeah, it was probably that we were probably setting a timer for 25 minutes and then checking every half hour. Um, So if you have. Oh, so go, go ahead. Sorry. You know, if you have anxiety about that, if. Everything is the same when fast passes come back. There are those little um, time periods. Yeah, windows, time periods where you can definitely get a fast pass for almost almost anything you want, except, I guess, Fantasmic. Um, But like any ride you'd look for. Yeah, I have learned for Fantasmic um, the best way that if you don't get it like right away when you get to the park, the best way is to wait like an hour before the show starts and then people who reserved it in the morning just in case and then they're not going to go to the show, they'll hopefully if they're a nice person, they'll remove that fast pass from their uh, from their ticket so that other people can get it if they're not going to go to the show. So that's where I've always found the most luck or like randomly from like three o'clock on. I'll just go on there and try to find it. And then most of the time I'll find it. I would say safely. Yeah. From like three o'clock until the start of the show. But I will add that personally, if you have a group of people, I would find one person to designate this task to, because it can get really, it honestly can get really stressful, especially at Walt Disney world for fast passes, because you can see one pop up and everyone gets excited. And by the time you add your party and go to like confirm it, it's gone. Or the fact that you even have to go on at like seven o'clock in the morning, Eastern time to book your fast pass. Oh my God. What? Yep. Why? Why? Coming from California. Thank, thank, God, they did not have fast passes when we came. And like, could you imagine having to get uh, me having to get up at? No. What what would that be? Four o'clock in the morning to get a fucking. Mm -hmm. Are you kidding? No, no. You know what? Susan can go on before me. I'll wait in the 20 minute standby line. (laughs) Literally, literally. But there are fucking people that do that shit that like. The 160 day mark or whatever when you stay on resort where you get to book your no, it's 120 days and they'll set that alarm for like fucking, I don't know, 2 a.m. and be trying to get back. Yeah. Yeah. If you're that kind of person, that's totally fine. I hope I hope Disney has taken this time to like rethink their fast pass thing. I just feel like the fast pass culture is so obnoxious. And it's just so, I don't know. It's like, is it really worth it? Is it really worth getting up at four in the morning to get a fast pass or flight of passage, which cool. It's a cool ride, but it's basically Soren through Avatar. Cool. That's not worth it. Getting up at four in the morning. You know what they're probably going to do? They're probably going to make it a paid program. Wouldn't surprise me. Seeing that they're taking away, you know, they're taking away everything. Mm. Because isn't the Max Pass, it's like a little bit more at Disneyland, right? Yeah, Max Pass is a paid program. You can still get fast passes for free, Hmm. uh, which they're not doing anymore. So like I said a little earlier, Disneyland was they still had paper fast passes. Like you would still go up to the machines and get a little paper ticket. And that was your fast pass. Or you could pay a little extra for the digital max pass and just have it all on your phone. Um, So now because of the pandemic, they're getting rid of the paper fast passes um, when they hopefully eventually reopen. So that's no longer going to be a thing. So I don't know if it's going to be an extra (laughs) fee. I don't know how that's going to work. I guess we'll see. I would assume it's going to be a fee because Disney is still a business and they're still going to want to make money. Yep. Totally agree with that. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, I guess that wraps up our coping session as well, which means so long. Farewell. Avida, say goodbye. <laughs> Kurt, do it. Kurt, do it. <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> you know what's funny? If Gen Zs are listening to this, they'll have no idea what I'm talking about. I'm so fucking sick of Gen Z right now. Sorry, Nicole. I <laughs> yeah, know you're Gen Z, you, but like, leave me alone with my fucking skinny jeans and my fucking side part. Yeah, Go to hell. You know what? I lived through 9 11. They're also starting to wear. <laughs> 90s fashion and thinking that they're doing something it's like but you're gonna make fun of millennials when you're stealing our fashion from the 90s like fuck you it's okay i know i sound old right now but you all can go fuck yourself (laughs) sorry nicole go fuck yourself i think i'm on okay i think i i'm definitely like the older gen z younger nicole or was that that you nick (laughs) yeah nicole we just got nicole here Wonder who See, it's she from. knows what Blue's Clues is. So she's, you've got to be okay. on the line. With Steve. Okay, no, 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 no. With Steve, yeah. though. You're, you're all right. There's a new you're guy. You're old Gen Z. No, there's not. Steve is the yeah. only, is the no, only Joe's one. Joe's all right. It's kind of weird, but Steve is far superior. Steve is mm-hmm. the OG. Yeah. You're welcome. That just proved my access into the club. Yeah, I think that's a good spot. I, I think that's a good spot. Yeah, let's, we should probably wrap this up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, guys. Thank you so much for listening to our Lunar New Year episode. Make sure you follow us here on Spotify. Nope. <laughs> Make sure you subscribe to us here on Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and anywhere that you listen to your podcasts. And YouTube. Subscribe to us on YouTube, please. Please. All right. Bye, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Bye.